difficult terrain for corals here. Uh, we're also in pretty solid substrate. Uh, so corals that grow bigger, you know, one of their major risks to themselves is themselves. Um, hmm. When they get too big, if they're on an unstable terrain, the rock will fall over due to the mass and uh, the coral falls down to the bottom and then is usually preyed upon by any number of predators, usually sea stars. So you typically find corals settling only in areas that are very, very favorable uh, for large growth. So is that a black coral you said? The one that yeah, the one on the screen, yeah. yeah. That's one of the best images I've seen because the polyps are almost, or the, it's almost translucent and you can see yeah. right through to the skeleton. Yeah. Yeah, it almost looks like gelatinous. It It is very, very, very fragile mm -hmm. uh, when you handle those. Um, just because the where the branch points where the branch attaches to the main axis, they're held together so carefully, so finely, that if you don't cradle it when you take it out of the bio box, the weight of gravity will cause it to break. Wow. Um, yeah. Check out channel three at home if you want to see this coral we're talking about. Oh, very cool. Asako, one of our scientists ashore, um, coral biologist in Japan, is telling us that the deepest black corals from 8,600 meters. 8,600 wow. meters, yeah. wow. Wonder where that was. In the Kamchatka Trench. Ah, yeah, there so we go. Far to the northwest of here. Is that something imaged with an ROV or? Uh, it was, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was an ROV observation or if it was a, a sample. I'm guessing it was probably a collection from a dredge or a trawl or something. Right. Could have been by a, a submersible or a, an ROV also. But 8,600 meters, there's not many vehicles on the planet that can go to um, that depth. So I suspect, yeah, it was from the 50s. Right. You want to do a reset just for kicks? I sure do. I just updated the interrogation rate. Oh boy. Oh. Tell me more. <laughs> every two seconds instead of every three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But there are um, some really, yeah, sp generally. We, we have some pretty good records of deep corals growing down, you know, in abyssal depths and, you know, maybe even hadal depths. But, um, you know, the ability to image and get good data on them in situ is more of a recent development. Um, so, you know, we're still trying to get... Uh, vehicles that are able to get become you know full ocean depth capable to get those images and and often those are few and far between opportunities where we get to go down and do that kind of thing um, and typically you know the deeper you go the more time you need to spend it's not that it's any more or less diverse or any more or less abundant things are just very low density down mm. there so you might have to travel for several kilometers to really get a good handle on how many species are down there. So very time intensive. It was just all folded up. They look so much smaller when all of those polyps are. Very nice, yeah. Another sparsely branching bamboo coral. Very healthy looking colony. Large, large nodes. 
can see in some of the older bamboo corals, they actually start to over calcify their nodes, uh, especially at the base. But this one is covered with tissue all the way down to the base. It's really a good sign that it's still growing, still very healthy. Okay, go ahead. Steve, that was totally hands free. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. That's the way to do that. I'm guessing not too strong of a current there. No, nothing. There's basically nothing. I swear you were driving because it went like straight down the stalk. I know. It followed I the stalk perfectly. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. Yeah, we got like the base and everything. That was pretty great. Yeah. So some downslope here. That makes sense. Yeah. I want to do one more move, and then we'll make our way due west. Yep. Just, if we do one more move, then we can just make head due west for a long time. Yeah, we can kind of arc around. There's nothing magical about the waypoints here. I'd like to remain perpendicular to the slope as possible. Makes it nice and easy to look and see things. All right, it's perfect. But yeah, that we've, I think we've entered a really nice promontory where we have really great bamboo corals uh, on this site. <laughs> Steve, I'm seeing some of that. That's been bouncing. <laughs> that uh, what looks like marine snow, but then it looks like it's Maybe swimming. Maybe I should go back to the three again. second interrogation yeah. rate. If you ever want to come over and look at my monitor over here for a good view, I can I can see it yeah. in here. Mm. So hold on. yeah, that's what we should get a handle on. It should be short. Um, yeah, we should be heading upslope very, yeah. So the currents what, moving kind of from the north. Uh, well, how is the current moving aside from your movement? Yeah. Yeah. Bridge, Nav. Can we move bearing three one five seven five meters?
Okay. Um, we could make. All right. All right. I see. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> I was thinking about that earlier today. Uh, Ah, that was a um, a lot of watch. I just remember Rennie, he's like, oh, the USBL is not working. Oh, here's a cliff. Here you go. <laughs> 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 uh. That was a memorable one. This divot does not have a lot of life in it. It does not, no. <laughs> More life, please. Okay, this must be the bottom, this like manganese nodule yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, area here. Can you go take a look at the nodules? Yes, we can. Very interesting. With with the goal of moving upslope whenever it's convenient. Yeah, we'll we'll keep moving. For sure. I'll just get down there. Uh, all these uh, small egg-shaped nodules are basically uh, mostly crust that have oh, okay. accumulated on small uh, substrate, like grains of sand or sediment. And that's what gives them the like roundish... Yeah. yeah. They typically only accumulate in areas where the current is just right because the nodules accumulate crust at you know, millimeters per millions of years. But, uh, you know, sedimentation rates may be faster than that. So you have to be in an area where there's good current flow so that they're not sedimented over, become buried. These, right. these are similar types of things to what... Get out of here. Continue up slope. we got to move bearing 280. Similar types of things to what are being commercially get explored for in. exploitation and in, uh, in the Clarion Clipperton zone. Well, you get situated and I'll call it in. Kind of between Hawaii and the U.S. mainland where uh, nodules are being examined for their commercial value. Bridge, Nav. Can we move two eight bearing two eight zero for one hundred meters? We did a fair bit of nodule sampling sampling on the last cruise where uh, we had some scientists on shore or uh, 
other scientists out here who were working on trying to characterize microbial communities associated with nodules as well as uh, crust accumulation dynamics. Life, I see life. Go for Zoom. Closer? Lost an arm. Is that a crinoid? Uh, yeah, it's actually a Brisingid oh, sea star. Okay. Yeah, it's lost a couple of arms. Cool. Um, they're all in regrowth. Yeah, so this is oh, more... Oh, those little nubbins will become oh, yeah. arms again? Yep. Oh, yeah. neat. Yeah, tough to tell why, but, uh, you know. Okay, go wide. But those are all large spines coming off the arms. Uh, they're quite sharp. Oh, no kidding. Yep, yeah, they are not cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but they, yeah, they'll use those spines to trap food particles often. Do sea stars have many predators down here, or would it be more likely that you know you're diseased or something, and you would can you like shed an arm a sea star? Yeah, I I don't know. I've never seen predation on stars like that, but. Now, I know some things eat sea stars, like uh, oftentimes you'll see other echinoderms eating sea stars. Uh, some types of urchins eat sea stars mm -hmm. more generally. Down here, I don't know if that's the same case. Um, but, you know, they they are there and they potentially are food items for something. Oftentimes what you see on sea stars are things like parasites or grazers, you know, gastropods and you know, other critters that are picking parasites off or you know, just feed, sometimes feeding on the animal itself, but, you know, they're, they're not really consuming whole parts of the animal. They're just usually eating bits. Just snacking. You know, snacking, snacking, grazing. <laughs> kind of like what you do when you go to the kitchen at... 11 o'clock <laughs> exactly <laughs> you don't you don't really want to eat a full meal we just want something not bad yeah he made that move really seamlessly Take a look at the white stock coming up on the right. Yeah, uh, the fan right here in front of us. Yeah, I'm not sure what Literally. it is yet. Perfect, yeah. On the plane is better. Oh, on the plane is better than... No, no, oh. as you are coming around oh, to the okay, side, yeah. yeah, so it's like planar. Totally. Go for Zoom. All right. So this is a new family we haven't seen on our watch so far. This is a primnoid octocoral. The mm. ones with the scales, uh, if you remember. This is probably a tough call. It could be in the genus Norella or Candidella. Uh, tough to tell because usually you have to wait for their polyps to close, but I'm going to lean towards okay, go wide. Norella on this one, um, but it's a, it's a tough call usually with these. Oftentimes if you, if you brush it or if you hit it with some thruster wash, they'll close up and it's easier to see, um, but getting images of it with the polyps open and polyps closed are both desirable. 
ideally, but that was plenty of guys. I'm waiting for Argus to make this move. Sort of is. Oh, great. Thanks, Josh. Sample number of the last rock we took. What was the sample number of the last rock we took? Eight. Okay, cool. I, I don't think we're going to make another of the rock sampling depths for crust on our watch, but um, we'll kind of just keep an eye out for anything unusual or strange, or if there's some, I don't know, really interesting angular rocks for you know potential dating of the seamount, we'll keep that in mind, but um, yeah, I'm not sure how, how much more sampling we'll do. Uh, it's kind of just discretionary right now, but I'll give you plenty of heads up. Awesome, thanks. That's an angular rock right there. Andrea would be stoked. The big one? Yeah. Yeah. That was an that had Andrea written all over it. What do we do for the person who gets the biggest rock of the cruise? <laughs> I think that goes to Dan last time. Uh, yeah, we it would have to. We didn't do anything for him. so We let him let, grab lots of big rocks. I think grabbing big rocks is its own reward. <laughs> so dexterous, too. He got to get off the ship. That was <laughs> 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 we sent him home. Wow. Yeah, another primnoid coral off to the left-hand side. That one's probably either a Calyptrophora or Norella. It's okay if you don't have time. Nice, pretty coral. 
काफी सेम Most oh, likely, yeah, uh, Norella. Let's say for this one. Okay, go wide. If the polyps are oriented downwards, it's typically Norella. Um, Norella has more uh, species with downward polyps, but there's exceptions to all those rules. Bridge, Nav. One hundred meters bearing two eight zero. So Ashley, we have a question from our viewers about what sort of data we log as we're exploring these areas. Do you want to explain some of the sorts of things that you're doing in your seed? Um, sure, yeah. So basically, I'm just uh, logging everything that Steve is talking about, um, as well as the terrain. Uh, so when the terrain changes, like when we saw the nodules, I uh, logged that. And I'm also taking pictures of just about everything that we see so that we can go back through it later and identify it. Yeah. Great. Thank you. It looks pretty steep here. We're probably not seeing a lot of stuff because this rock could potentially be looser, unstable, um, something that a long-lived coral or sponge might not want to attach to. But we do see some things like brittle stars, crinoids, and um, brisingid sea stars in this area. But there's some pretty solid in-place stuff here, too, maybe old Cracked sheet flows, boulders, fair bit of crust, sea, uh, sea cucumbers there. I think we've definitely moved into the primnoid zone, the other dominant here versus the bamboo corals, which were a bit deeper. Another norella species. Do their downward facing so they have downward facing tentacles or what was it's it's um tentacles is the wrong part. So but. with this group they have these very um rigid kind of armor like plates on the outside of their body wall. And based on the orientation of the plates, how the plates are arranged on the on the coral polyp it kind of dictates which way that it can move when they retract. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, if you are wearing a suit of armor, you know, and you tried to move a certain way, you're only restricted to how, uh, you know, far or the armor can bend or move. It's very similar uh, for these corals. Um, but yeah, for each individual species, they have a different, slightly different arrangement of plates and these sclerites uh, so you could imagine that they might uh, arrange slightly differently uh, as the polyp is open or closed. 
but the tentacles themselves are are much smaller and they'll typically retract into the around the mouth area but the polyp itself will contract uh, against the axis gotcha This is delightful. Yes. Oh, what's this little green? Oh, yeah, there you go. Ooh. What's that? Whoa. Bigger coral colony. We haven't seen this one in a while. Oh, I was looking oh. at the little green thing. Oh, of course. <laughs> see the big yeah. white coral colony. What's the little green what? guy? The green thing? What? <laughs> I just see urchin. a coral there. Uh, yeah, this, this is a green urchin. Okay. 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 Um, we'll look at the corals. Yeah, kind of like a tennis ball. Yeah, color. yeah, totally. <laughs> but the coral is uh, what I would typically expect to see at this depth as well. We start seeing them around three kilometers and shallower. Uh, but this is Go for zoom. a Chrysogorchid coral, so it's a golden coral. Uh, even though it looks white, if you were to scrape away some of the tissue on the axis, it would display like a golden um, luster. But this is a Chrysogorgia coral in the genus Romulogorgia, and the species name is Melitaris. Okay, I gotta go yep. wide. That's uh, deeper here. Romulogorgia Melitaris, named in part because uh, Melitaris for the way that the polyps are arranged in a very regimented manner on the branch tips. Very descriptive. I am out of auto X Y. It was that that um, genus was actually recently uh, redescribed and replaced in a different group. It used to belong to a genus called Pleurogorgia. It was shuffled around a bit uh, earlier this year um, by some colleagues at the Smithsonian, uh, among others. Uh, worked on redescribing that species based on new collections we gathered in the capstone campaign out here in the Pacific from 2015 uh, to 2017. Can you tell us more about the capstone campaign? Of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so capstone was a program run by uh, NOAA's Office of Ocean Exploration and Research, um, along with partners, um, but it, would stand, it stood for the campaign to address Pacific Monument Science, Technology, and Ocean Needs, uh, as the acronym. Wow. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a mouthful, but it was a it was a great uh, series of cruises that visited all the major monuments and uh, sanctuaries of the Pacific. Um, primarily U.S. holdings, but also other jurisdictions as well. Uh, we visited both the monument in, around Hawaii, as well as um, the main Hawaiian islands, the musician seamounts to the north of Hawaii, um, the Marianas region, uh, down to the Pacific Remote Islands, Howland and Baker, and uh, Jarvis, uh, down to American Samoa, and then uh, a few sites in between. Um, kind of characterizing and doing baseline assessments of uh, what the seamount communities look like all over the Pacific Ocean. So it was a very, very fun time uh, on the Okeanos Explorer uh, and the new 6,000 meter deep discoverer ROV. Um, that got some workout and sampling down super deep, uh, as well as yeah, some expanded cap capabilities, uh, expanded our capabilities to sample things like corals and sponges in the deep ocean in the Pacific. And we're still working on a lot of that data, actually. Several publications came out since uh, about 2018 or so, but uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of data that was collected and there's a lot of discoveries to make, but we're now starting to see the fruits of that project.
That's exciting. Had there been much exploration of these deep sea coral systems in the Pacific before that? It sounds like at least enough that we're changing some of the classifications of things, but. Yeah, the, the collections are incredibly valuable. The imagery is incredibly valuable, especially like tight shots and tight zooms where we can make uh, distinctions between species. Um, most of the exploration that had done, been done previously was done by uh, um, folks out of Hawaii, the, the Pearl Lab, um, Hawaii Undersea Research Lab, uh, and explorations by um, the Pisces subs uh, in other years uh, in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands as well as the Pacific Remote Islands, but really never um, in a kind of systematic way that we had done with Capstone. Moved up quite a bit in the past few seconds. Yeah. It got a bit vertical for a second there. But then it's going to get sh sort of less steep again. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do bearing 270. Okay. This on the ridge. Sounds great. Ridge, nav. 100 meters, bearing Anemone. Oh yeah, let's take a look at that. A couple of things that could be. Go for zoom. Oh yeah, really nice. Big anemone. Cool. Okay, go on. Beautiful. I was checking to see if there was a separate secondary ring of tentacles, which could indicate whether it's a certain family of anemones called the serienthids, which are tube-dwelling anemones. They typically have a row of tentacles on the outside and also a row of tentacles right around the mouth uh, that separates them from the, the other anemones. But that one did not have that row? Nope. No, it did not. We sampled the that purple... Um, Purple anemone last cruise, right? That was a serianthid. That definitely had a very prominent secondary row of tentacles. Go for zoom. I would not have imagined that those were uh, spiky. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that for a little while too. And then our uh, good friend at the Smithsonian, curator of sea stars, Chris Ma, uh, wrote us in and said, "Yeah, they're pretty spiny. Uh, it's hard to see because we never really sample these." So okay, um, go away. But they are spiny. We might have sampled them once or twice in the past uh, on yeah. Nautilus. I don't have a good recollection of them. I feel like if it was spiny and if it was dangerous, I would have remembered. <laughs> we've uh, we've sampled some pretty spiny critters before, like uh, pancake urchins and things like that. 
Like what? Pancake urchins. Pancake urchins. Yeah, they okay. have the, like they the urchins. Flattened? Yeah, they're they're a little flattened. Um, they have those little like walking Covered shoes. In maple syrup. No, oh. yeah. <laughs> 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 Walking shoes? Yeah, they have walking <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and you're making fun of my maple syrup? <laughs> They're not that flat. They're more like lumpy pancakes. I love how, like, randomly sometimes the sonar die is just like, nah. Yep has to be the way we're oriented like slant angle to the ship and where's the, the gym's right there <laughs> the what the um, moon oh, pool's right there more boxes yeah. it's like the gym's right there that's great why are we talking about that's where the moon pool is <laughs> <laughs> just took me a second to connect the dots already been to the gym today kate that's a new day <laughs> you're right it is a new day i've not been to the gym today Big angular Unless it, today it's UTC, then you've already been to the gym. I like oh, that way you're of right. thinking. Actually, I have been to the gym today in UTC. <laughs> <laughs> so also remember that the ship is upslope of the ROVs. Yeah. Can, uh, okay. Where nav is not really the best position. But all things considered, I'd still say it's pretty good. What's that? I said all things considered, I'd still say that's pretty darn good. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We just got, we've gotten really spoiled. You're getting spoiled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. It like started at 4,000 meters and like we could have just flown the ROV just on the Sonardyne this whole time. My point cloud is 10 meters at 3,000 meters. <laughs> what, I know. What's going Where? on? Come on. <laughs> can, we just, can we zoom on this uh, textured? substrate here yeah totally go for zoom Let's see if it's nodular or if it's something that might just be like botryoidal textures is this what you mean or do yeah. you want the the more no, this solid is, this rock? is all right yeah this is good it looks like it, it some of them could be nodules but some of them are definitely attached to the seafloor so, so it, yeah. it would be like big botryoidal clusters so like like kind of like grape like crust clusters of uh, nodules. It's pretty neat. Okay, over, go over time, they'll become, they'll adhere to the rock if they're on hard rock substrate. But if they're on sediment, typically they'll remain individual. Do we have a scoop on board? I don't think a scoop was put on board. Okay. This is hiding in the front drawer, but I don't recall. Could we slurp nodules? I don't know. I mean, I think these are all about you know, maximum five centimeters. I, I would probably say no. The black coral off to the left hand side. Black coral red tissue. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Good eye. There we go. Bathypathies, maybe? Can't quite make it out. Uh, there's a couple of different genera in this area, and uh, it's dependent on how the branches come off of the main axis. But good shot, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think um, if these nodules hold, uh, well, Nav and, and uh, Kirk Pilot can tell me if, do, are you guys going to go to do a um, stop 
and hold for the next watch change, or are you just going to keep it going? I suggest keeping it going because we stopped and held for our last watch change, and that took a bit to come back from. Okay. Um, yeah, and we're still using nearly max thrusters on both of ours. Um, These are pretty extensive nodule fields. Can you drop a target here and just say nodule fields? Yeah, absolutely. Good tight sponge there that we were hiding behind. Uh, her oh, yeah, I see it. Argus. Is this the hour for watch change, or is it next hour? It's, it's in uh, 23 minutes. Oh, really? That watch went Blew fast. through that watch. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> That's awesome. There is, I mean, the DP drama helped. Yes. That always, that always makes things go fast. <laughs> we take holidays. <laughs> Yeah, we're in the we're in the middle of it. It's really this is extensive. Yeah. Wild. It's interesting these like sediment shadows that the rocks create. Yeah, no we kidding. See with the is there a prevailing current here? Yeah. The current oh. is really actually doing that right now. You're just moving with the current. Uh, so it's it's pretty quiet, but I would say it's sort of coming from the uh, northwest still. Yep. And that's that direction agrees with the sediment shadows we're seeing on the, I would say the lee side of these rocks. Yeah, right. And you can see the streaks too, like, that might indicate the current. Are those oh. ripples in the right hand side? In, in that softer sediment patch? Or is that just yeah. the texture of the rock? I can't tell. I can't tell either. You push in there. Yeah, let's go for zoom. Mm, rock, I think. Yeah. Rock and sediment drape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed on how extensive some of the nodule fields are on some of the seamounts we looked at both last week and uh, this week. It's pretty extensive. I mean, maybe tens of meters in a certain direction. You'd have to imagine that all the way around the seamount where you have where you have that kind of terrain is where you have those types of yeah. substrates as well. And they're not they're not barren. They, we saw some branches of bamboo corals earlier, uh, sponges that are associated with the nodule fields. So there's life there. Both the, the megafauna and the, the small animals that live inside the sediment. We did try to do cores. Um, last cruise with uh, mixed results. We'd never actually got sediment cores within a nodule field. It just doesn't hold. It's not very cohesive, and the nodules don't help uh, maintain suction either. Black coral? No. Couldn't be. Oh, well, yeah, what is that? Good, sh good spot. Oh, yeah. That is a good spot. That took me a while. Yeah, it took me a minute. Go for Zoom. I don't want to stir up too much sediment by, like, driving around here. Full zoom there. Uh, not black. Looks like it could be a bamboo coral. And uh, tilt down. There's a sea pen actually right above it. That little red stick. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Yeah. So there's <laughs> quite a bit of life here when you start zooming in. Cool. Tilt okay. down if you can. Oh yeah just sure. A, just a tick. Yeah. I would say it's probably a bamboo coral there with that red or okay. pink brittle star on it. Okay, go wide. Tough to tell.
some of what these uh, small branching coral. Uh, actually, that's a dead sponge base. Oh, okay. With yeah. a with some brittle stars on it. Right. Yeah, this stuff looks like it's it's just a thin veneer of sediment on top of these very, very large botryoidal textures. Uh, because if a sponge base can attach onto it, it's probably very stable. Um, you know, not so much just loose nodules, but these are pretty well cemented into the side of the seamount. Do you have a question from a viewer? Do we ever collect dead coral or sponge samples like that that we just saw? Sometimes. Yeah, it depends on what the goals of the expedition are. Um, we do occasionally collect dead uh, corals uh, for aging purposes. Uh, for example, if we have a, a large bamboo coral that's fallen over, we might collect the base of it. Uh, which can tell us some interesting information about um, the age of that bamboo coral. Uh, depending on how old it is, you know, if they're very degraded, it's not super helpful. Uh, for sponges, it's not as helpful uh, because they don't have very good datable structures. Mm. Um, yeah, so it, it's a bit more challenging. Do we have any way that, or how would we guess a date for a sponge if you we know, were trying to age it? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't have a good handle on if at all sponges could be datable based on their spicules. You know, that's really the only element that you have to date that's solid there. Yeah. Huh. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not familiar with techniques for silica age dating since I'm pretty sure that they continuously make them through their whole life. Interesting. Uh, huh. I don't know if they're, if they're built upon at all. Um, we also might collect rubble or dead material for associate analysis. You know, when a sponge or coral dies, uh, just, you know, the, the coral dies or the sponge dies, but there's still a lot of associated organisms, small invertebrates that live in and around the dead material or years and years and years. Um, so that could be another reason why we might collect some rubble for, for looking at the invertebrate life living mm. inside better. Yeah, that makes sense. Plenty of rocks here. Yeah. Hey, oh, buddy. Wow. Ooh. Fish in that hole. Fish friend. He came out to say hi. I would have expected him to hide. Oh, I haven't seen that before. Friendly, friendly fish. Yeah. Looks like a type of cuskiel. But 
Not the best when it comes to backbones. Go for zoom. <laughs> More. But we do have John some way away from amazing fish head. specialists in our Science Ashore okay. community that will take this imagery uh, via our YouTube replay and be able to identify the fish and get back to us. Yay, thank you, Scientist Ashore. <laughs> I just saw Bobby Argus. Say it. <laughs> Bobby Argus. In the uh. gauge cam. <laughs> it's been a sighting. Uh, I'm just looking all around. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes, I do know. <laughs> I'm constantly on the lookout for people who don't know so I can tell the story again. Stopped crinoids. Beauty. Go for zoom. Oh, and there's a small little cup coral in the background, too. Where? Oh, there. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll look at that instead. That's not an anemone? I don't oh, think so. I, I think it might okay. be a cup coral, but we can take a look. Okay. We can take a look. It's a bit of a mystery. Why don't I get nice and left behind so that I leave the next watch a mess? <laughs> 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 yeah, 10 minutes. 10 minutes <laughs> to get in trouble? Yeah. You know, they'll probably be here in five minutes. So. Okay. Okay, go for Zoom. Again. Yeah, it's a cup coral. No kidding. And you know what? I I actually have a good idea of what this might be, even though um, at okay, this depth... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, at this depth, there aren't many choices for cup corals. So this is a, a relative of your shallow water stony corals uh, that form reefs. Um, but this one probably is in the genus Vaunella, uh, which is one of the deepest cup coral species we find down here. Um, but it has this very wide flared calyx, uh, which is why I can identify it through tissue. Normally, you need to look at it when the polyp is completely the tissue is completely removed. So what we'll do is, you know, we'll extract out some tissue for DNA uh, sequencing, but then we'll take the cup coral and we'll put it in some bleach or something and digest off all the um, tissue. And then we can look at the hard parts, uh, which help give us some pretty good diagnostic characteristics. And you said there are many cup corals Bridge, in nah. the deep sea. Not at all. Uh, or well, this deep in the sea? Right? This deep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're very deep. Um, so we did see a couple of other cup corals. We collected one on the last cruise. Um, 